Hey everybody, Wii U, Wii U, double warning. Number one, if you're a huge fan of Wonder Egg Priority and if you're invested in it emotionally and don't want to hear people being very harsh about the writing, please don't listen to this podcast. You don't have to, but you've been warned. Second warning, content warning, pretty much everything, especially suicide and sexual abuse. But if there's anything that you don't want to hear about, including self-harm, child abuse, murder, transphobia then you probably don't want to listen to this podcast. It'll probably come up at some point. Okay, thank you. Hey everyone, and welcome back to Egg Slushy. <laughs> it's a delicious slushy that contains a lot of egg. <laughs> Hi, Ruby. <laughs> no, look, I'm not a Ruby. I'm just a generic anime girl. Well, yeah. Like I said, hi, Ruby. Oh, uh, <laughs> well, we just, I think, probably beat our record for dimensions. Of Ruby. <laughs> but hey, hey, this isn't about Ruby. This is about egg. It's egg part two out of three. It's Wonder Egg priority. We got to talk more about the bad eggs, the rotten eggy. Yeah, so this is, so the last episode was everything that we had both seen. And this was, the, and up before was the point where I stopped. I only roughly know what happens from this point. I don't know any of the details. So, uh, oh boy. Hell Yeah. <laughs> Hell yeah, I'm pumped to tell you. <laughs> time for an adventure. This is such a good show. <laughs> so last time uh, on Dragon Ball Z, uh, obviously it was the whole thing with Momoe where we met her. So now our squad has been assembled. So this episode, we need to learn a little more about Nehru finally, kind of. Uh, okay. Nehru's weapon is a gun, but it's made from a, a compass, but the kind, the compass that's the thing with the pencil to draw a circle with. Oh, okay. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah, 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 yeah. I know that thing. Huh. I don't, like, is there a word for that that's different from compass that can be confused with the other thing? Is, is like, it a protractor? No, a protractor is a different thing. Uh. You disgust me. <laughs> It's almost like it's been a while since you were in fifth grade, <laughs> the only time when you would have such an object. <laughs> yeah, a little bit. But anyways, uh, and her battle realm is a highway overpass, which is kind of cool. Okay. Because I think her sister presumably killed herself by jumping off the overpass. Oh, uh, of course. So, <laughs> of course, we have to open on some fucking sexual assault situation. So oh. she's fighting a monster that's like a guy who a girl had run away from home and he offered to take her in and presumably raped her or whatever, or she killed her Herself before he could or something and isn't that a wonderful story yeah. and since we're finally getting to see Nehru fight of course sometimes we get shots of her bloomers of her like little pumpkin white uh, underwear shorts because she can't just fucking wear pants <laughs> <sighs> yeah and then she shoots that guy and defeats him and she makes some kind of like pun in in the English version they like kind of translated as like I'll blow your mind but she does like a dramatic pose and says the dramatic pun line and it seems very weirdly out of character for her. I was going to say that seems like something that like Rika might do or something. Yeah, it's very strange. Yeah. But anyways, then all three of the of I's new friends arrive at her house and and greet her and greet her mom and they're all coming over to hang out. And the mom is like, wait, you're Sawaki's niece, aren't you? The the creepy teacher. And she's like, yeah, uh, that's me. Wait, hang on. What? Who's the teacher's niece? Momoe, the not trans girl. <laughs> yeah. Is the creepy teacher's niece. Oh, Christ. Okay. It's never relevant. Don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> of course it isn't. They give you that information and then it, it, it doesn't matter. <laughs> oh, God. Why do they do this? Why do they just throw in stuff like that all the time? So fucking weird. So and and Rika's being super like, oh, eyes mom, give us snacks, blah blah blah. I'm a bitch, but you love it. Don't you love it, viewers? <laughs> is the mom obliging or is she like fuck off? Yeah. Like, yeah, the mom's just so fucking excited that I has friends. Ah, uh, okay, fair enough. <laughs> She's a pretty nice mama. And so the girls are all hanging out in Ai's room eating snacks, and I mentions that she thinks that Koito, her dead friend, liked Sawaki Sensei. Right. She's worried that that's why Koto killed herself, is that she liked Mr. Sawaki. Mm. And Rika starts doing, like, almost a meta guessing what might have been going on. Like, she's like, maybe they were dating and something happened. Maybe she got pregnant. And, and oh, have you ever thought about that? But in a very, like, haha gossip way. Mm. And it's, like, played for humor. And I'm like, but that's really what I'm I'm worried about. So fucking, is, should I be worried about that? And then, and you see Mr. Sawaki come to the house and he looks darkly at Ai's room. And I'm like, what the fuck, TV show? <laughs> 
I'm also just like, this is this is I's friend who killed themselves fairly recently, and I's obviously all messed up about it. And Rika thinks, oh yeah, this is a fun game, <laughs> like just just gagging about the horrible things that might have happened. Look, it's in character for her. the The problem is that is everybody acts like she's just their you know goofy friend. You know that's just Rika being Rika. But yeah. the problem is that she's actually a huge bitch. <laughs> this is like a slightly tamp down version of Ueno from um, fucking Silent Voice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's just our bitch friend. Yeah. <laughs> what you gonna do? Every group has one. Yeah, but fucking, when you say the teacher looks darkly, like he glares at the room or something, or? Yeah, you just, you see him arrive and you see him kind of looking over and it's kind of in, you know, dramatically shaded. And, and then you see Eye's door and that's all you see of that shot. Mm. So again, it's just fucking, the show is fucking with you. The show is like, isn't he creepy? And then this leads into another flashback. And the flashback is him drawing I alone in the art room, just drawing a portrait of her and saying, hey, you shouldn't be self-conscious about your eye. It's beautiful. That's... I'm not a fucking (laughs) sexual predator. There's no reason to think so. That's so fucked up. What are they doing? (laughs) While you're watching the show, you could be like, oh, okay, they're setting up this teacher as a creep. But eventually finding out that he's apparently not, then what the fuck? What, what? <laughs> I don't. I don't understand. It's like here's my conspiracy theory. <laughs> so you know how it feels like these scripts were kind of written like one at a time, kind of slap slapdash. Yeah. What if the the people who were kind of like directing and drawing the show and stuff didn't realize that the teacher wasn't supposed to turn out to be a rapist so <laughs> they were like setting up for they were you know they were so confident there was going to be this reveal of the teacher being a t- <laughs> but then it didn't happen and they were like oh oops <laughs> <laughs> that would be pretty amazing <laughs> that's my conspiracy theory i think it, i think it checks out i mean the only other thing i can think is that like they decided to back out of it <sighs> They were worried that it was going to look too bad or something. Oh, yeah. And the other thing to know is that apparently the writer in a lot of his like live action dramas that he's written, he does like student teacher relationships as a thing. So <sighs> okay. apparently this isn't out of character for him as a writer. Okay. The Japanese Woody Allen. Sure. Uh, <laughs> and so still in the flashback, Koito encourages I to pose for him for a painting because he wants to win an art contest and he actually wants to be a full time artist. So Koito doesn't see any problem with this. She just wants to, you know, be encouraging and it's all fine. Mm, mm, mm. And we'll get to see that later. Cool. <laughs> so back in the present, Rika tickle attacks Nehru, as girls do. Mm, and mm. like at one point, it like even switches to first person view for like uncomfortably long. And I'm like, I don't, please cut to something else. Yeah, that's, mm, yeah, that's pretty sus. Totally normal girls. So we cut back to Nehru. I realize this show likes to do a lot of anachronistic storytelling, but in a way that feels almost like it's just trying to, you know, it's it's a more artsy story if you cut parts of it and rearrange them so that it's anachronistic. Right, okay. So we're back at one of Nehru's dream battles, and this lady, I always made fun of her, and back when Twitter was still standing for Wonder Egg, they kept, they, they didn't like the way that I described this lady, <laughs> because I described her as a woman to, that killed herself to preserve her perfect hair. Yeah, okay, and so they're I, like, I've, I've seen you <laughs> talking about this, and I want to understand. So, yeah, she appears in the Nehru dream battle zone, and she's like, oh, you have a lot of split ends. Look at my perfect hair. I, I died at the, when my hair was... Was, and was most beautiful and don't you wish that you could have beautiful hair like me <laughs> okay and she says that she died to preserve her perfect youth because you see she was at that beautiful moment when a girl becomes a woman and it, and then her beauty immediately is spoiled and at and at that moment when you know like a teen hits puberty or whatever is when women are most beautiful for people who know who frill is wink 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 <laughs> Bean will be able to enjoy that later. <laughs> I I definitely feel like this is a particularly male way of talking about female beauty. Oh, hell yeah. And especially if you're talking about the puberty thing, that's like, well, a male pedophile's way of talking about female beauty. No, yeah, like imagine an actual teen girl being like, now I am at the peak of my beauty. I am like a beautiful butterfly who shall soon wilt and be too old at the age of 15. Yeah, no, they don't. No. <laughs> it's not. 
you know, like girls do. Yeah, this is the thing. It's like the, it's like the tickle fight. It's just this is just so obviously not written by a woman. Mm-hmm. Like like with everything else, there is no there's no real insight here. It's just some dumbass's idea of what girls are like, and I hate I hate it. And there's a goofy hair monster that's made of three like silly cartoon hair things, and they're like, woo, woo, woo. and and they're like, who's the most beautiful? Wahoo! Mm-hmm. And the woman's like, you should die too while you're at your most beautiful. Hey, why don't you die too, Nero? Whoa! <laughs> so, okay, so th- this is a girl who's killed herself, who's also just like nuts, I guess, and still is. Yeah, so we cut back to present time, but I'm, I'm just going to go ahead and say what happens with this. Okay, okay. Because, so what happens up happening is uh, Nehru can't beat the hair monster by shooting it, so she finally shoots the lady's hair off instead. <laughs> and she's like, and then the lady's like, how did you know that's what was needed or something? And and Nehru wins. And Nehru's like, you actually regret it, right? After all, no one will ever call you pretty again. And and the lady's like, oh, single tear, poof. <laughs> Oh my god. <laughs> it's so fucking it, it's I don't I don't like it. Well, it's just yeah, like like we were saying in the last episode, the girls stop being it stops being about grief and talking about that sort of stuff and it just starts being girls be crazy. <laughs> yeah, here's a wacky girl who killed herself. Yeah, like what's the what's and what's the lesson here? What do we what do we what did we learn? <laughs> the lesson is you're prettier alive than dead. So don't kill yourself because then no one will ever compliment your looks which are very important. Wow. That's 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 cool. It's a cool lesson. Yeah. I'm I'm so glad Nehru didn't say anything like, you know, maybe your appearance isn't the most important thing because I'm the logical one. Beep boop. No. Yeah. It's that no one will ever call you pretty because you're dead. <laughs> and being called pretty is very important. That's a worthy thing. Well, it's, I mean, what else could a woman want, yeah, exactly. you know? Yeah. What, it, like, because, I mean, think about Momoe, that's all she ever wants. <laughs> in the present day, the girls are hanging out in, like, an abandoned bowling alley. It's part of that whole complex that these mannequins hang out in that just has a bunch of, like, abandoned shit in it for some reason. And they demand to the mannequin guys, like, hey, let us let us do a round of bowling. And the mannequins are like, hey, no, you should get back to work. And the girls are like, what? But it's like group therapy. Maybe we'll kill ourselves if you don't let us ha 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 and and then they turn on the bowling alley and the girls have fun bowling alley times <laughs> do they genuinely joke about killing themselves mhm mm. <laughs> yeah this is um it's a very thoughtful show yeah it's this is this is this isn't really about exploring grief anymore right eh? <laughs> <laughs> no what's really horrible is that momoe is talking about how girls just fucking keep hitting on her and one of the other girls says like takarazuka you know that the takarazuka review thing that we talked about in review starlight yeah yeah yeah, yeah. And Momo is like, yeah, it's such a pain, which is, again, you know, Takarazuka, it's it's girls, it's cis women dressing up as hot boys, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So just, just, just uh, as another point in the Momo is cis category. Mm-hmm. And, and Momo is like, Haruka was the only one who saw me as a girl, but she put the moves on me and I panicked. Oh, no, what should I have done? Uh, uh, who cares? Fun arcade times. Pew, 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 pew. The girls are hanging out. They're having a great time. Is it... <laughs> If you were to ignore the bad stuff, is any of this cute? Like them just hanging out, having a good time? Yeah, it is. It's one of the, it feels like the last moments of um, the girls just, you know, like hanging out as friends, having friend times. Oh, wait, we also get some other stuff. But uh, yeah, it, it's kind of nice to see. But especially with how ridiculously sorrowful Edgelord stuff gets later, it just feels like this is in here to, you know, create that juxtaposition. Yeah, 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 right. <laughs> But then they're hanging out in that garden area and having like a little picnic and they get into an argument about whether it's their fault their friends died. And Rika's being like, you know, you shouldn't blame yourself. It's not your fault that, you know, Koito died or whatever. And I was like, I just want to know the truth about it. Bah, bah, bah. And they're, they're arguing and their mouths are animated in a way that... <laughs> Have you seen that gif meme of Darling in the Franks where yeah, uh, yeah. the the wife girl's like, bah, 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 yeah, the, wow, wow, they're, wow, they're wow, talking wow. like that. Yeah, yeah, that's a shame. Yeah, and it's some of the same animators. So I'm like, who is this key animator that just draws people yelling like, bah, 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 bah. yeah, they can't they can't do mouth shapes <laughs> when someone yells. Yeah, it's it's so funny looking. <laughs> and then Nehru reveals what what happened with her sister that killed herself, and so the super you know very grounded very relatable story is that Nehru says her sister went crazy and stabbed her in the back and then ran and jumped off a bridge and Nehru was like what the fuck was with that 
Yeah, that's okay. That's that's a lot. <laughs> um. Okay. <laughs> mm -hmm. Are we gonna find out what a deal was there, or is this another one of those things where it's just like, hey, here's a detail. Bye. Her sister will never be mentioned after this episode. Cool, cool. It's amazing. Cool. Because she gets another really big episode with someone that she knew who's in the egg world, but it's not her sister. And somehow it's like he completely forgot what her deal was. It's so weird. Show, this show is amazing. It's fucking... And we see her scar in the shower. And of course, we get like a lot of naked shots of her in the shower for the sake of seeing her scar. It's, it's the only reason. And her scar looks like a fucking monster dragged its claws along her back. And it's like, how? what the fuck did your sister stab you with? <laughs> this does not look like a stab wound. And she's like, I go for myself. Uh. So the, the, the friendship didn't take, I guess? Well, I, I could have sworn she said that she went for her sister because she let her sister die. Re remember in like episode two? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But then yeah. in this episode, she's like, in, in what sense did she let her sister die? Her sister suddenly stabbed her in the back and then ran and jumped off a bridge. Yeah, I don't really get how she, exactly how you blame yourself for that. Unless there was some, like, unless there was some other thing in the run up to that. <laughs> that she considered like the circumstances as her fault, but if we're never going to find anything more about the sister, then it's like, well, <laughs> I guess, I guess who knows? <laughs> she stabbed me super bad in the back multiple times. Why didn't I do something about it? <laughs> <laughs> Fucking ridiculous! Just, just the idea of someone being stabbed, leaving these horrible monster, monstrous scars, and then just and then going, mm, yes, this is my fault. Like, what did she do? <laughs> But she doesn't mention it being her fault again, so maybe she doesn't, you know, that's that's a different universe that we're no longer inhabiting. <laughs> so when uh, she defeats that hair lady, we do see the statue of her sister for the first and last time kind of in the distance. Mm -hmm. And Nehru's like, you were trying to tempt me to die, weren't you? Oh. <laughs> And so they're all kind of feeling like, do we want to keep doing this? Uh, we don't know. But then the Akas use reverse psychology to make the girls keep coming because they were like, you can quit if you want to. And then the girls come back and continue fighting. And, the, and one of the Akas brags to the other Akka like, oh, these girls, they're easily manipulated with reverse psychology. And they're like, ha 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 ha. Right. So just reinforcing that conversation they had earlier on. Yeah. About, about how girls are easily manipulated. Girls be stupid. Yeah, girls are easily manipulated by lodgy men. Yeah. So this this is one of the scenes where, you know, when people would be like, well, obviously what they were saying in that other episode wasn't supposed to be true because they're bad guys or whatever. But this is one of those times where they're just proven correct by the show. So yeah. Yeah. And the show isn't going to like go on to like counter this in any way later on. Yeah. 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 Uh, but anyways, that's episode five. <laughs> wow. OK, that that was that seems like a miss. Oh, you think that one's a mess, my friend? <laughs> <laughs> no, but you know what I mean? Like, it just sort of, they went and played arcade games, made a bunch of bad jokes, and then we found out, <laughs> we found out what's her name's insane deal. And there was a hair girl. It's a, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's a lot. <laughs> It's just good fun bonding times. <laughs> so episode six starts with the the Cenos, the little monster boys have been upgraded to haters, or that's what they uh, translate them as. Okay. So, and and they're very similar. I think they're just like more green. And it's like, why did they change? Who knows? Who fucking cares? Yeah. And I is protecting a girl in the egg zone. That's like. She's a particular kind of character that's like a girl with an eye, a hospital eye patch and like hospital clothes and like holding a stuffed animal. Um, she looks very similar to a, another girl that's in Magical Girl Sight. And I think it's kind of like a character trope of like a kind of crazy girl. Right. Okay. And it's really funny because this girl really confused people and, and they were saying like apparently ghosts are canon to this to this show now before I like watched the episode. And I don't think it's that ghosts are canon to the show. I think it's that this dead girl is like a chuny or like a girl who pretends to see ghosts for attention, except it's mixed with her actually being crazy and hallucinating ghosts. Okay. And it's really weird. It's like, what was the deal here? But is she is she dead or is she just around? No, she killed herself. This is one of the egg girls. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So. She's an egg girl who pretends to see ghosts, maybe, but is also maybe crazy. Yet she seems to legitimately believe that ghosts are real and she can see them. But she's also dead. <laughs> like, Well, that's why she killed herself, is because no one would believe her about the ghosts that she sees all the time, I guess. Okay. 
<laughs> but yeah, but she like weirdly in terms of her imagery and the way she talks really overlaps with this like trope that's known in Japan of like a girl who will insist that she's like mildly psychic or can see ghosts kind of for attention as a young person. Ah, uh, okay. But, but th- that mixed with like someone who's like actually delirious or whatnot, it, it feels stupid and I hate it. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's, that's fair. <laughs> the, the girls are all fighting and at one point they're saying something with the Akas, I don't remember what, but then all together one at a time they're like, our mission is wonder, egg, priority. <laughs> well, they just say it. <laughs> yeah, they say it in English and it's one of those times where it's like, I don't know what exactly you thought this translated to. <laughs> <laughs> I think they're saying, like, we need to prioritize the Wonder Egg girls, but I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> it doesn't quite work. Yeah. No, it's odd. I am um, a German member of the Discord mentioned that I might be a uh, a German pun, a name, because it's it's a homonym for the German word for egg. Oh, yeah. I, uh, but... <laughs> I mean, that would surprise me. I think that's just, I mean, it's most likely just a coincidence, but it is kind of funny. Yeah. I mean, like, they do like German sometimes. <laughs> German is cool. <laughs> no, this one likes cool English. <laughs> that's true. Yeah. There isn't any gratuitous German in this one. Uh, <laughs> but so Ai's mom wants her to talk to the teacher, please. He just wants to know what's wrong. And she's like, I'll think about it. And and so this episode is going to have some, some more development with what's going on between I and the teacher. So Great. Get, get hype. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Get hype. <laughs> I'm so hype. <laughs> this is another one of the, the episodes that's kind of hard to describe because there is a lot of jumping around in the timeline. So, we, like, we'll, we'll just get scenes, and it's like, I guess this scene happened after a couple of the other scenes, and blah, 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 that's what makes it a better show. Right. Okay. So, you see the scene of I showing up to hang out with the other three girls in that abandoned mall zone. Why do they hang out there? Is there an explanation for that? Because that's where the gotcha machine and stuff is. Oh, okay. That's- it's just a mysterious realm. Again, if if the show didn't try to go so hard sci-fi, it, it, I'd be fine with this weird, mysterious, abandoned mall zone. But because they do, it's like, what is this place? Yeah. <laughs> why, they, yeah. why don't they have any questions about this? Yeah. And they go to talk to the Akas about the haters, the, the new enemies. And the Akas are like, yeah, I guess the enemies are getting stronger or some shit. Here, it's time to introduce a new mechanic. So they give them like these little soul gem pendant things and they you get a pokemon now is the thing <laughs> that's the thing now okay so they they introduce mascots essentially yeah and they say that you have to hatch them with your body heat in the real world and they'll imprint on you as their mother and it's important and <laughs> I remember the saw of the Discord was saying like, oh, see, because it's about a thing about like pregnancy and how that's the most important thing with girls. And at the time I was like, that seems like a bit of a stretch. That's a bit unfair. But but the more it goes on, I'm like, oh, yeah, that is what this was about. This is <laughs> about the importance of motherhood for women. Uh, yeah. Like like I said before, if this is like a dude writing what he thinks girls are like, he's just hitting all of the, these are what girls do and this is what they're for and those sort of tropes. So, yeah, that kind of makes sense. Yeah, all any 14-year-old wants is to become a mother immediately. <laughs> so if you say Vengi, your little pet comes out, and I has a chameleon, and Nehru has a snake. I fucking love her snake. And Rika has a turtle, and Momoe has a gator. So they all have, like, these reptile friends. Mm. And, and they're pretty cute in a kind of ugly, cute way. Uh, yeah, like, I was going to say, how do, you rate, how do you rate these guys as mascots? Uh, I, I really like Nehru's snake because she's pink and has like a big ribbon, like a big bow and, and it's adorable. <laughs> oh, so you know it's a girl snake. <laughs> yeah. It's very important. <laughs> like, like Mrs. Pac-Man. How else could you know? <laughs> <laughs> That's cute. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, don't get too attached to them or you're going to have a bad time. <laughs> okay. Yeah. And in the dream world, the pets get like real big and they can eat the haters. So it's like they just introduced a new enemy type and then they introduce these Pokemon and their job is to fight those guys and they're good at it or whatever. Mm. I mean, like in a different show, it, like, it, you know, it's lame, but it's not the worst thing in the world if it's, if it's kind of fun, you know? Yeah. Because, you know, like Sailor Moon would do this all the time where her last weapon would stop working and then in like one or two episodes or even that episode, they go, okay, here's a new weapon and that'll work. And it's like, oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah it's just that in this epi- in this show that has like so many loaded metaphors going on and so much to get done in a single core and everything it's like why are you suddenly introducing pokemon mm-hmm. and it ends i you'll know by the end of this why they introduce the pokemon is very important <sighs> 
So <laughs> I is back in the dream world fighting and that same uh, eye patch girl gets hatched again. And that's when we find out that she insists that she can see ghosts and they even send her to a mental hospital and no one believed her. And then she says, it's here. And an invisible monster attacks and throws eye. So this Wanda Killa is invisible. Oh, shit. And cut to a scene where the teacher arrives at the house and is staying for dinner and I tries to leave and, and she's like, I don't I don't want to participate. And the mom's like, please stay and, and eat food. And she's like, fine. And then the mom's like, me and Mr. Sasaki, we're going to start dating if that's OK with you. Right. And then cut to a scene where I and is telling the other three girls and she's, you know, very torn up about it. And Momo is excited because she's like, oh, my uncle, he's so nice. He can be dating your mom. It's wonderful. <laughs> and then Rika points out that he's quite a bit younger than I's mom. And she's like, you know, live-in boyfriends are always abusing their girls' friends' kids, you know, like sexually abusing if they're girls. So that's that's a good reality to point out. <laughs> mm. <laughs> cool. Yeah, that's that's a fun thing to think about. Statistically, you're likely to get abused. Ha 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 ha. Yeah. So just consider that. It's also just weird that like Momo would be like super positive when it's. I assume it's clear that I is not all that pumped about this. Like she just likes her nice, nice uncle. Yeah, but like you think that maybe she would be trying to tell I that like no, look, listen, he's really nice and da da da. Not just like yay. <laughs> it's it's kind of weird. It's all very weird. Yeah. She, look, she doesn't know about the, all this weird framing around him. She just thinks <laughs> that he's supposed to be presented as a nice guy and is a nice guy. Yeah. And they're like having a debate about the likelihood of him being a sexual predator and shit. And I was like, no, I don't think so. So, so. so don't worry about it. I doesn't think he's a rapist. So we can be assured. Mm. But we haven't seen the framing either. And like, considering the stuff this show does for fun, like, yeah. <laughs> there's, there's there's every reason to be afraid that something like that was going to happen in this show. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Again, there's so many sexual predators in this fucking show. And yeah. so the idea that they would frame this guy so explicitly as to seem like a sexual predator and then he isn't, it's just like, again, why? <laughs> why did you do that? You know what it might have been, Cube? You know what it might have been? What? Not all men. <laughs> <laughs> what if that's what they were trying to prove? Like Not all men priority. <laughs> what? <laughs> You know, sometimes men really look like they're a sexual predator, but you know what? Maybe you judge too harshly. Mm. Maybe you judge too harshly. Karen, Karen, why did you say that about me, Karen? <laughs> it's me, the writer of the show. There's one episode of Voyager where they do that, and it's it's awful. It's a really terrible episode. Oh, they, God. They have like a rape analogy with Seven of Nine. Oh, that thing. Yeah. That, that's got a whole lot. That's a whole bucket of fish. We can't talk about that. I'll be mad. <laughs> I have to be mad at this show. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, that episode was a super mistake. Mm. So Nehru guesses that I like Sasaki Sensei, and and she's and I's like, what? No, that's not the case. Well, that can't be. So cut back to dream battle time when she's fighting that invisible monster. Now, just 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 quick just quickly, this was something that people were wondering about with I, right? Yeah, that it was going to be this thing where she has the teenage crush on a teacher, and that's what everything was. That's where all of this angst was coming from. Yeah. So so. It sure seems like that from her reaction to Nehru. Yeah, yeah. For Nehru, the logical smart character to be the one who brings it up seems like that's like what they could be pushing us to think. Yeah. Yeah. But at the same time, making him seem like a fucking predator, like mm -hmm. doing both of those things at once mm -hmm. is so fucking weird. <laughs> fucking show yeah. so back in the dream battle where she was battling the invisible monster the <laughs> i feel like any way that i describe that girl is loaded the eye patch girl throws her bead bracelet to eye and she's like you can use it to see the invisible things maybe or something and so i puts the bead bracelet on and so she can see the monster now and it's a really silly looking monster it's like a fucking elephant girl and <laughs> how, does, how does this connect to <laughs> someone's fear of something? Maybe she's supposed to be like a taper, but yeah, I don't, I don't know. Cause uh, again, all the monsters past episode three are just really silly cartoony things. Mm. And so, yeah, even the fact that it's like, oh, this super scary invisible monster. And then you see it and it's just this fucking goofy cartoon elephant girl. And it's like, oh, fucking why? <laughs> <laughs> it sucks. Uh. 
And I is just like still saying as she's fighting, she's like, I don't like Mr. Sasaki. I don't like him. Mm-mm, I don't. And she kills the monster and lets the, the girl know that she believes her about being able to see the ghosts. Okay. And that's the end of, of that dream. And so a lot of... <laughs> There was a lot of confused takes by people in the Discord about like, okay, so so she doesn't like the teacher because during the part that's about seeing the truth, she's insisting she doesn't like him. And but then it's like, but also the, I mean, I don't think the that ghosts exist in this universe. So that girl was delusional. But then I insist that she believes her. And also when I wakes up, she has the bracelet in the real world now. Okay. That doesn't come back yet. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <'Cause>, uh, <laughs> and also, after the pen lights that she gets in episode four, she never does that thing again where she, like, gets a weapon from someone. That stops being a thing. Yeah. Unless you count this, but it doesn't really... It's just it's just a bracelet that looks like a bracelet and it lets her see a thing. Yeah, that doesn't seem like a weapon type thing. It's certainly not it's certainly not as fun. Yeah. Because that was like early on that seemed like a really fun aspect. But like, oh, she's gonna keep getting new weapons. Yeah. And da, 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 and yeah. This is one of those plot mechanics that they phase in and out. So you see I summoning her little pet on her belly over and over. She's like uh, summoning him and making him go back in his egg and summoning him and making him go back and just smiling at him, her child. Mm. And she's like, you know what? I have to go to school. I have to do it. I'm really energized. And she's like running to the school and she's like barely dressed. She's just so excited. And she and she sees the teacher guy and she grabs his arm and she's all out of breath and blushy. And she says, I, I, I'm going to start going to school again. And that's the end of the episode. Everyone was very afraid that she was going to like confess in that moment, wasn't she? Yeah, and it's very much framed like something like that is going to happen. Because, again, the last things that she was saying was, you know, like, I don't like him. I don't like him. And so it's framed like a confession scene. Mm. But then she doesn't confess to him. She says she's going back to school. And so people were like, okay, so she doesn't like him. But considering she definitely does like him, I think it's just that, like, okay, she's willing now to go back to school to face her love of her teacher, man. Yeah, but then it's not that. She's just... Or it is that or something. <laughs> Do we ever find out? Do we ever find out if she likes the teacher or not? How she actually feels about this dude? Yes. You will know at the end of this podcast how she feels about the teacher. Okay. All right. In the most amazing scene. <laughs> so episode seven, we see all the girls starting their day. And very crucially, we see Momoe in the one bra that she owns. Okay. And this, but this motherfucking bra causing so many problems in the online discourse because there's a scene later where you see it and a lot of people seem to think that that's the first time you see it, but it's not. You've seen it twice before. And it's cyan and it looks kind of like a cyan like bikini top almost, but kind of puffy. And it has like a cloth that goes over the cleavage that's white and pink vertical striped or like peachy pink. So it's roughly trans colors. It's roughly trans colors, yeah. It's also a really weird fucking design for a bra. I've never seen a bra design quite like that, and I don't know why it looks like that. <laughs> you said it was sort of puffy. Is it meant to be like it's padded? No, it, it just, I guess it almost looks like a training bra or something. Yeah, like like a bra for it just, someone. It just looks like a bra drawn by someone who doesn't know what a bra looks like. Oh, okay. <laughs> it's like in the vague, rough shape of a bra that you might think off the top of your head. Okay. People will have to see it on the video and decide for themselves. Yeah, I've seen rough screenshots of it, and I don't, I, I didn't make anything of it myself. But yeah, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it doesn't look as weird in the later scene where you see it because it's you're only seeing that like middle part of it. Mm. But anyway, the girls notice that I is wearing her skirt short, you know, because I guess to look sexually appealing for Sasaki Sensei, presumably. Mm. And we see, oh my god, this is the Rika episode, yes! <laughs> ooh, I'm so excited to tell you about this one. Ooh, 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 I like ooh. how you keep remembering these things as we're recording. <laughs> Look, it's a lot. It's like talking about Ruby, right? It's like there's 50 things and, and you can't keep them all in your head because there's just so much. So so Rika's mom is like a snack bar uh, bartender lady. She seems to like own her own little shitty bar. Okay. And She's like a drunkard lady and Rika's going down to leave for school and her mom's like, oh, Rika, it's it's your birthday, isn't it? Here, have this $50 bill, buy yourself something nice. Right, okay. So, yeah, bad mom. 
Yeah. And Rika's like, no, I want you to tell me about dad. And she's like, why do you care about him? He abandoned us. And Rika says, he abandoned you. Mm-hmm. So this episode keeps... Uh, I'll get into it. So the girls are meeting back up to hang out again. And Rika shows him a bunch of pictures of her mom with different men and says that she doesn't know which one is her dad. Okay. And she says that when she... Her mom had made a promise to her that when she got to middle school, her mom would tell her who her dad was, but it was a lie because even her mom doesn't know which man is the dad. Okay. So Rika has memories of things her dad told her, but also neither her nor her mom knows who the dad is or what he looks like. Okay. Is it at all possible she was lying earlier when she said her dad told her this? No, we see flashbacks to it. Okay, so we saw fl- we see flashbacks to her talking to her dad. Talking to her dad in the car. Right, but at this point we're saying she doesn't know who her dad is and neither does her mum. Yeah, Schrodinger's dad. <laughs> right, so they just forgot what they were doing with this character, I guess. I, I really think there's like there was two versions of the script. One where her mom didn't know who the dad was because she's just such an evil, loose woman. Mm. And one where the dad got a divorce because she's such an evil, loose woman. And the the two versions got kind of mixed together and, and he became Schrodinger's dad. <laughs> <God>, Christ. Because <laughs> it's definitely presented as the mom is like, ha ha ha, I will never tell you who your dad is because even I don't know because I'm such a loose woman. Ha ha. <laughs> yeah, it's there's a lot of very negative portrayals of women, and particularly older women in this show, eh? Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's because, you know, when, when you're 14 or whatever, you're at your peak, and then everything past that is just fucking spoiled milk. Mm. Mm. Yeah. So when she's talking about her dad, it turns into this whole fight between the girls about parents and whether it's, it's important to know your parents or whatever, and Rika ends up running off. And then I follows her and tries to bond with her over the fact that both of them have no dad. Right. Or, or I mean, I guess I has a dad, but he's divorced. I think she says she sees him like once a month. So this is a surprisingly normal divorce situation. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's low, but yeah, sure. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. At one point they say like he must have divorced her mom because her mom was like too competent and had her shit too together and the guys can't stand that and... I guess that checks out. That makes sense. Is that is that is that like an attempt to be woke on this show's part? I don't know. Maybe it's like, hey, if if, if you are, you know, if you got your shit all together by yourself, you're never going to be able to keep your man. <laughs> that actually ties in a little bit with that other show he did that had the lesbian couple, doesn't it? Because that was partially about like these two women who are you know really career women and they're doing real well and stuff, but you know they've got no time to get a man. So they become lesbians. Oh, yeah. You're talking about, yeah, the, the other show he wrote that. <laughs> that live action show. Because everyone kept pointing at it yeah, and going, yeah, yeah. see, he did the show about lesbians. And when you actually read what the plot is, it's like, no, this is bad. Yeah. Because he said something in an in- The interview's been translated a bunch of different ways. There was a weird line in there about like, that might have just been a bad translation about girls holding hands going into the toilet or something. It's just everyone latched onto just because it's a funny image. But no, yeah, it, it, it's like they were dating as an extension of like the class S kind of relationship. Like he doesn't see those two characters as being actually gay. It's just they got no time to get a fucking man. Yeah, so they just become gay for that reason. Gay for convenience. Yeah, which is like I don't think I don't think this is the rep you want, guys. <laughs> this, this guy really understands LGBT issues. So they go to like a batting cage in this big abandoned mall complex and they're doing batting cage shit and Rika's just yelling about like, I don't adults fucking get together because they like it. I don't get it. <laughs> and then Nehru is talking to Momoe and that's when she says that maybe she isn't cut out for female society because she's too logical. <laughs> cool. Cool. That's a cool. And also she never had parents. That was- <laughs> <laughs> fucking hell, this show. It just keeps saying terrible things. Like. How are, like is it were people like who were thinking it was work trying to be like ah oh, see these girls just have all the wrong ideas, you know about womanhood because of society and they're going to learn, but like that that doesn't happen, does it? <laughs> no. <laughs> so 
and Rika is talking about how she fantasizes so much about meeting her dad again and you see the flashback of her in the car with her dad where he says you know pretty women never need a, no- a wallet because a man will always pay for that wait, wait wait hang on this happens in the same episode that she says she doesn't know who her dad is and then we see a flashback where she's with her dad yes oh my god that's what I've been saying. He's a Schrodinger's dad. Oh, I thought it was at least like broken up between a couple of episodes. I didn't know that they did that Mm-mm. in the same goddamn script. <laughs> oh my god! I mean, even at the beginning, when she when they're talking about you know like how the dad abandoned them, that doesn't that implies that there was some kind of relationship there. Not that you know she just slept around with so many guys she has no idea who the dad is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it doesn't make any sense. God. And she cries because she just wants to meet her papa so bad. Yeah, even though <laughs> I'm she's... sure he's a wonderful guy. Oh. <laughs> Fucking hell. <laughs> okay. So she comes back to her her horrible snack bar mom, and the mom's like, "I bought you a a cake, and it's in the fridge, but the icing is probably all dry now." <laughs> and Rika goes upstairs to cut, <sighs> and. <sighs> The scene is really weird because so she's like getting really like tense and and she has the the razor over her arm and she's like shaking and then she looks down and her fucking turtle pet is there and 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 when they come out in the real world they're like very small like like you could hold them in your hand Mm -hmm. and he's looking up at her and she's like and she smiles at him and she tells him to go back in in the thing and at first he doesn't and then she says it again and then he does and i couldn't tell whether the idea was that like because he's there she won't cut herself or whether she was just making him go back in so that she could cut himself without her fucking turtle staring at her yeah yeah well either the same i guess i don't know (laughs) yeah but they at least don't show her cutting herself this time okay so she does cut herself though (sighs) or or is it it's confusing because like in, in episode three, she made it sound like she stopped cutting at some point because she promised to herself that she wouldn't. So I don't know if this was going to be her doing it after a long time of not doing it or what. Or, or if it's if it's just like a compulsive behavior that she relapses into sometimes. I mean, that's not uncommon. Yeah, but I mean, this is episode where we're going to get some hot takes about cutting. It's going to be great. Oh. Very uplifting. Okay. So tonight's Wonder Egg uh, suicide victim is this is one of the ones where I was like, God, you just don't give a fuck about these women because it's a the victim of a cult. Like she someone who killed herself for a cult and she's just kind of like a bitch to Rika. <laughs> she's like, don't you want to die? You should want to die. This is my cult leader. He's awesome. I gave him all my money. And she shows that she also cut herself when she was alive. And she's like, you should just kill yourself like I did. <laughs> and Rika, she does give in to it at, at, for a while. She, like, gives up and she's going to let him kill her. Okay. And all the other girls are yelling into their, uh, their little pendants can also be used as communicators. And they're yelling, like, Rika, Rika. And the big monster man, he, like, takes one of his, he has a little bunch of syringes that he fights with. And he kind of pulls her big bandage that she has over her arm down. Because the bandage is skin colored, at first I thought he was just like pulling her skin down in a really weird abstract way. But it's a, it's a bandage. Okay, okay. But the way that he does it, like to reveal her scars, it also like makes a big bloody cut down her arm. Okay. And so it's like, it's very like cutting like imagery. Sure. Even though it's not, it's, it's weird and I don't like it. Yeah. And, and all the girls are yelling out to her, and she's like, I just, I want to be saved, Papa. <laughs> and as she's about to be killed, bam, the turtle comes out of her pen, and her turtle saves her. And she's like, oh, yeah, because he thinks I'm his mom, and you have to protect your mom. Damn, I almost turned into a selfish piece of shit mother like my mom. <laughs> uh, and, and Even though it's, like, in the middle of her, like succumbing to trauma she still refers to herself as a bad person no uh, wait i don't understand the question okay so so this is her like succumbing to her trauma to some extent yeah she's like i'm just tired i just want to die yeah i, I want to give up but then because the turtle comes out she has this realization about what mothers are supposed to do yeah which is not die selfishly yeah but this is meant to be a reflection on like what her mother's doing kind of 
Yeah. I, oh, it's like she needs to be a good supportive mom to her turtle son, unlike her mother, who's a shit selfish lady to her. Yeah, but just the idea that, like, you've got these people who are dealing with serious trauma, but if they don't get it together and stop being babies about their trauma, they're selfish pieces of shit. Is that the idea? I, I mean, what do you want from me, Fiend? It's a bad show. <laughs> I just, this just seems like. You want me to tell you what the shit means? This just seems like a really, really bad message, or at least just a really harsh kind of shitty message to push across. Yeah, it's like what a good affirming message to continue living is so that you won't be a piece of shit mom to your weird Pokemon that you got. Yeah, yeah. As much as suicide can be like a selfish act, to sort of refer to it that way makes me very uncomfortable, considering it's also like a, you know. It's, yeah, it's more complicated than that. And it's like, it's, just, it's a lot. This just fucking show. But anyways, it's time for uplifting music in Sakuga. Wow, it's so fun and cool. Mm. And, and she says, my mom taught me one true thing. Men who ask women for money are all fakes. And, and, and then she kills the big bad guy. What the fuck does that have to do with anything? What, where did that come from? I don't know. Because it's like, you'd think that would tie into her dad thing, but it doesn't. Yeah, but also, all, all the thing about her constantly bumming money off people or something. But, okay. I guess the idea is like, women getting money from men is cool. Men getting money from women is wrong. You know? Mm, right. Uh, feminism. <laughs> <laughs> So she kills the big bad and a bunch of cool sakuga, and he splatters into a blood explosion. And his he's just like blood splitting all over that cult that the woman who killed herself. And she's unhappy, and she's like, "But you're weak too. You cut yourself and shit." And this one, she says, "I had to keep re-listening to these lines and try to like really transcribe them as literally as possible." Because she says, "Yeah, I'm weak. That's why." So that I don't ditch things I care about, I use this to balance things out, like stroking her scars. I'm weak, but that's the real me. Even if it means hurting myself, I'm going to live. And it's very uplifting. Yeah, this, this, I heard about this message. And I'm just, I don't know enough about, like, people who self-harm and stuff, but this doesn't seem right. <laughs> this just, like, the idea of, like, you know, this is the real me. These times i've harmed myself i don't this does not seem right <laughs> yeah and it's like and then it's the idea that it's like she should stop resisting cutting because she's been you know she's like she promised herself that she wouldn't anymore and she was like kind of resisting doing it so it's the idea that's like no it's okay that this is my coping mechanism it's actually really empowering and i'm like i don't like it, like in isolation you could say that like i i need to stop looking away from this thing i was doing to myself but yeah, when tied to like all the other times when she's been trying not to do it, it's like that's that's this is a weird metaphor you're tying together. This is this is the time that I tweeted about how it reminded me of a silent voice because it's just like she's saying it and she's smiling and uplifting music is happening and I'm like, what the fuck? Is happening? <laughs> yeah, this just feels like the confused take of a person who doesn't know really what they're talking about. <laughs> Which is like a lot of you mean this entire show. Well, that's the thing that 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 like to me that ties in with everything else in the show. Because, like, yeah. again, in isolation, I could see the idea being if up to this point she'd been pretending that she had, like, she'd been not dealing with the fact that she does this. And now this was her going, no, I'm going to face up to the fact that I've been harming myself and I'm going to get help or something. That'd be different. But Yeah, or, like, like yes, it's it's unhealthy, but it doesn't make me, you know, like a piece of shit person. Like, it's it, it's part of who I am and what I've done and I, I just need to, you know, like, accept myself yeah. or whatnot. Yeah. But it, but it really makes it seem like, hey, it's good that I cut, actually. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Very strange. That might have been what they were going for, and they just completely confused the execution. Maybe. I don't know. <sighs> Who knows? Yeah. Either way, it doesn't work. <laughs> Either way, you're just looking at this going, mm, mm. And it's completely disconnected from, like, the dad thing. Or, I mean, I, I guess all the dad and mom stuff is just her life is really hard and that's why she cuts. And, and so this is the good resolution is it's okay. Mm. Mm. The girls all, like, come together and hug Rika and they're like, don't die, Rika. And she's like, I guess I won't. <laughs> and the rest of the episode is that she comes down from bed, you know, because she was having one of those dream battles. And so she woke up and she comes down to eat her shitty dried out cake. And her mom's on the other side of the bar being all drunk and stuff and the mom's like you'll abandon me too someday and rika's like yep but not yet and that's the end of the episode that's good and uplifting like i said i just i 
a show playing with stuff like this is just when it doesn't seem to know much about that stuff. It's just so shitty. <laughs> like, yeah, because like you'd think at some point, it's like I guess the one good thing her mom do- did was give her advice about men, but it's not like that helped her solve the kill the monster problem or something. Oh yeah, no, no. The, the actual the actual plot mechanics and themes and everything that comes together is a complete mess. I just mean, I just mean in a general sense being edgy in this way oh yeah yeah because i'm saying like i don't understand how the show feels about the mom because Mm. the mom only does bad things Mm. but then it's like yeah i will abandon you but not quite yet (laughs) yeah so what's that yeah what's that meant to yeah (laughs) so i horrible earlier today i sent cube a screenshot uh that i found on tumblr um i just want to read i just want to read the screenshot to us for a second so this is is a person speaking in quotes this do you guys hear that it kind of sounds like an airplane, Naruto asked. Everyone turned to the window and immediately frozen in shock. Oh my god. And then we have a comment from the author. So tell me what you guys think, all right? Review, please. I hope I got my 9-11 facts right. Oh, and I dedicate this story to all those who lost their lives on 9-11, and I pray for those families who lost loved ones that day. I like, I feel like this is, I feel like this fan fiction about the cast of Naruto being in the two towers the Twin Towers, is not dissimilar to One Direct Priority in that <laughs> you're just taking- it's so academic. <laughs> you're just taking a really dark thing and attaching stuff to it and then, and then like, for the sake of making your thing more serious and, and also pretending at the same time, oh, we know we're really talking about deep stuff here. <laughs> like I really, I really want to really examine and, you know, and, 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 and say- you know, do something for these people who are in these situations. But like, you're just you're just being an edgy teenager writing fan fiction. That's all this is. That's that's all this show really is. In the end, it's just a bunch of edgy nonsense, like dressed up like it's quite serious. You know, uh, mm-hmm. that's that's what that's what bugs me the most about these shows. It's just you throw in these things in for the sake of it, and you're not really you're not really interested in actually exploring or learning. Like that's that's because that's what it is, isn't it? It's like. This guy doesn't seem to know anything about these topics, and he didn't seem like he was particularly interested in finding anything out either. Uh, he's just doing a cool hip scene in anime. Yeah. You can watch the girl suffer, and it's endearing. Yeah. All right, where are we up to? So episode eight yeah. is filler, and I actually haven't watched it, but it's just a recap episode, and that's because so Cloverworks was having some issues. Yeah. And... They were running out of production budget and time, and by the last episode, not counting the super double f- true finale, that episode looks like shit, and it's really interesting to see. But this was the first sign that things something was going wrong, because episode eight is, is just a recap. <laughs> this is the thing, because they announced they were going to have this final episode uh, that was going to wrap the show up, but it's not coming out until June, I think. Like, it's months after the original show aired. Yeah. I assume that that's happening partially because obviously they're having issues with production, but also partially because like the reason it's taking this long to air is that like all the media time for airing shit would have been booked up. If they hadn't had to have made this filler episode and got everything out on time, all their episodes would have fit into their slots and it all would have been all good because they unexpectedly had to like delay one episode. That's part of the reason why it has to wait so long is because you've got to go way down the chain to book some time for the show. Yeah, it was really strange because there was a lot of confused messaging about like, no, it still is only going to be exactly 12 episodes. And then it like wasn't. And then someone announced that there was going to be another episode, but then it got deleted. And it was all like, it was a fucking mess. Yeah, yeah. Th- like, th- yeah, things are clearly like not going right, <laughs> basically. Yeah. yeah. And it's rough. Like it, it's, But this isn't the first time A1 or Cloverworks have had this issue, is it? Like there's been a couple of other shows where... They were just sort of sudden production problems in a slightly Shaft-like way. <laughs> yeah. To Shaft's credit, they at least seem to get the stuff out one way or the other, <laughs> even if it kind of looks looks a bit pooey towards the end. <laughs> yeah. Well, I assume there's some COVID and stuff involved, but also it's really weird because Cloverworks was doing that and their weird compressed season of The Promised Neverland and Horimiya. Yeah. And like the same season. So it's like, why did you do this? <laughs> <laughs> they might have been a bit overstretched. Yeah. So episode nine, it's another Nehru episode, and this one's another treat. <laughs> Aren't they all treats? You seem to you seem to be enjoying all of them. <laughs> I was right about the anime. <laughs> <laughs> That's the big thing for you, isn't it? <laughs> Just that we said back in episode four, I don't think this is going to be very good. And you know, all these people, they were like, not all these people, but there were a bunch of people who were like, no, 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 you, you wait and see. This is going to turn around, and it didn't. 
<laughs> yeah, because that's the thing. If the entire show was on the level of fucked that episode four was, I could see it continuing to be hard for me to make the case and kind of complex to explain why it's a bad show. Mm. But then the show really helped me out by being a fucking trash fire <laughs> more and more. Yeah, it really did escalate, eh? Like it just kept getting worse and worse. But that's kind of that kind of makes sense because the sort of show it is means that it is going to escalate because it's just going to keep being edgier and edgier. Because that's all it can do to really raise stakes. Yeah. So, yeah. And he didn't have, like, a particular plot planned out, so he just ha- kind of has to keep doing more new crazy things. Yeah, <laughs> which he did. <laughs> anyway. So, neighbor time. Stop, neighbor time. <laughs> Okay, so she invites them all over to her place to hang out, and they're like, what, Nehru, are you sure you're not sick or something? You're inviting us over, what? So, so you know, Nehru owns a company, and she, like, lives in the high-rise that the company is in, and suddenly the girls are getting a presentation from a projector about how her company is, they're turning dreams into movies. They have the technology to look at people's dreams and <laughs> view them as movies. <laughs> Sorry. When you said that the, all these sort of magical girls are suddenly sitting down and they're watching a projector, I just got flashbacks to match your record. <laughs> oh my god, you're right. Yeah, it's, it's like in this weird sci-fi future, why the fuck are they using projectors? <laughs> That's something in- interesting uh, that I was thinking about between our recordings is we're probably some of the only people who didn't immediately want to compare this to Madoka, <laughs> the show. And I really think it's an unfair comparison to compare this fucking show to Madoka. It's, there's, they have like nothing in common and people want to say like, oh, this is one's also a magical girl deconstruction. But in, no, it's, it's just not. It just has girls that fight. Yeah, it has some of the genre tropes in the like there's the transforming weapons and you know sometimes sometimes it's it's like i don't think it's riffing on the genre for one thing and also yeah this has nothing in common with this has very little in common with madoka apart from like on a surface level the girls have a bad time like yeah (laughs) that feels to me like as much as you can compare really that's a silly comparison really yeah i would compare this shit to flip flappers first of all but flip flappers is better (laughs) and like than other like edgy ass magical girl side or whatever. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's fucking. There's many people who compare it to Madoka. Need to watch more motherfucking anime, <laughs> in my opinion. Or just watch more. Watch more goddamn magical girl shows. Like, <laughs> yeah. Understand what the genre is. If anything, like it has more in common with the post Madoka stuff. But even then, like not so much. Like I don't know. Yeah, it's just a weird edgy seinen thing that happens to have girls with transforming weapons. So it's, it's not. It's not in the same category. No. And you know how I love to compare things to Madoka and claim they're too similar to Madoka. You know i that's my shit. <laughs> but not in this case. There's not a single Homer. <laughs> <laughs> There's so many of these shows that do draw on that one particularly influential show. Like, I don't know. Oh, yeah. Yeah, but this, I don't think so at all. I doubt this guy's seen Madoka. I don't think he's seen much anime in general. Well, this is one of the first anime he wrote. He's like, this director has made most of his career as a live action director. Yeah, he also wrote one manga mm. that, or I mean, he's written a few manga, but, there's, there's, but we'll have to talk about there, his. <laughs> there's one in particular we need to get into. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, they're watching the video about, so now they know that her company has this technology to turn dreams into movies. So that's established. And they're going with Nehru to her room, and Nehru explains that she was born via artificial insemination of one of the members of this super international group of super geniuses. Mm -hmm. And she doesn't know who her parents are, but she's a super genius, super tube baby person. Mm. (laughs) Remember when we thought this show was going to be about girls exploring grief? (laughs) Yeah, you know, like grounded and shit, like like real girls. (laughs) What the what the fuck is this? <laughs> oh my god. Yes. <sighs> you need to know about all the Oh my god. I and I kept wondering if they were going to reveal that her secretary lady was her mom cuz at first when we saw her uh, very briefly in the show, a lot of us watching it thought that it might be her mom cuz she has like an afro and is kind of darker skinned. Mm-hmm. But it I mean it doesn't matter. They don't care and if, if that was the idea, it doesn't come up. <laughs> So we go to Nehru's room, and she has a pet albino rat named Adam. Okay. And they make takoyaki together, and they all do each other's nails, because they're girls. Okay. And they're having a, a very wonderful, you know, play date together. And then Nehru has something to show them. She pulls a curtain aside, and there's a girl in a tube in a vegetative state. <laughs> It's just been there the whole time. Yeah. And it's like, oh, yeah, I just, I really did just invite you for a fun play date. Also, here's my dying friend. <laughs> <laughs> oh, great. That's awesome. 
So this is Kotobuki, and she's another super baby like Nehru. They say that she's albino. Okay. <laughs> Which one, like, I think it'd be like a person with albinism, mm. but she also isn't. <laughs> I would say that that's the right way to say it, but she's just not. I'm going to show Fien what she looks like. Okay, I'm looking at the... <laughs> Um, I mean, <laughs> you know, that's what albinism looks like. <laughs> I mean, okay, she's got pretty pale skin. Okay, she has heterochromia. People with albinism do sometimes have like violet eyes. Yeah, she has one red eye and one purple eye. Yeah, and blue eyelashes. Yeah, she's got and- that modern anime thing of. The way they draw out the whole eyelashes is like one solid color. But they're like bright cyan. <laughs> yeah, which is different to her hair, which might be dyed, I guess. But like yeah, bright cyan is not an albinism thing, I don't think. And then she's got no eyebrows or yeah. almost no eyebrows. And I don't, yeah. And she has like really light blonde hair with like red. It looks like she like dipped it in red paint. I mean, that's a, that's a style of dyeing, I guess. But like, I feel like this is a very anime take on uh, albinism. <laughs> Yeah, and it's like the girls just look at her and they're like, wow, someone with albinism, she's beautiful. And I'm like, this is a weird, terrifying anime person. You can't just say that she's a person with yeah. And she's always making those weird, like, alien smiles, and, and she's strange. They're like, wow, al- albinism. And Nehru says albinos are supposed to bring good luck, which is a very logical thing for a very logical person to say. It really isn't a very respectful show, is it? No. It's just, like, not interested, just wants to riff. On a cool thing I'd heard about. I just, yeah. Oh, yeah. You know, she's a super mysterious test tube baby. And as part of that, she's, ooh, she has albinism. How exotic. Yeah. Yeah, I don't like this. So she's another super genius baby. So she was studying near-death experiments and she ended up in a vegetative state. So she's dying now. Okay. (laughs) And then Nehru says that she actually ran into her in a dream. And she was one of the egg people that she ran into. (laughs) In my notes, it just says, God, the way she looks. (laughs) She's just always making those creepy frog smiles. And and there's, you know, just like, oh, she's so beautiful. And I'm like, "Ah." (laughs) and she's also dressed like a little sailor boy. And I'm like, why do all these super babies have to be dressed like little European school children? I don't understand. (laughs) Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. But then they're fighting uh, the monster and Nehru brings out her, her good, good snake that can fly. And it's a, she's a good snake. Kotobuki says something that makes Nehru say, like, we aren't children of God, you know, because it's oh artificial insemination. Woo. <laughs> and Kotobuki's like, scientists who can't believe in God are incompetent. Oh, God, is this deism. <laughs> And she says by experiencing death, she's got to encounter parallel worlds where others of them are alive and parallel worlds are real. So that's good. Okay. So, okay, so this, is, this is something I was wondering about with this setting, the concept of parallel worlds and stuff. So that's a thing? Yeah, it becomes relevant in, in one other episode. And a lot of people were like, what? Parallel worlds are like an actual mechanic now? This is stupid. But I was actually okay with how it happens in that particular context. It was just that everything else was going on was so dumb by then. Sure. It does seem like that's something that potentially makes sense in terms of what happens to the statues or where the statues come from. Yeah. Or how there's this many girls around. Yeah, I'm not conceptually. I'm okay with that. I guess. <laughs> yeah, I don't mind it so much. It's just a really random thing for her to suddenly bring up, and and then you later find that is indeed canon, and it's like, why isn't it? okay? <laughs> the Wonder Killer this time is like a big chicken man in a lab coat, and he looks stupid as fuck. And Kotobuki like doesn't even know who he is really, but you find out that he was some some government science man who was obsessed with her body and wanting to dissect it, and just wanting to dissect her body. Cool. Cool. <laughs> and Nehru is like arguing with her and she's like, you left me behind to deal with everything because Kotobuki is being, being very casual about the fact that she killed herself and is uh, going to die or whatever. Right. At some point she says to Nehru, like, you know what you want me to do, right? Like she wants her to, to cut her life support off. Right. Because she's like, the government's going to take me and dissect my body and I don't want that. So you need to kill me. And she's like, hey, I'm, I made a lot of friends in the parallel worlds and you'll get two too. And it's great. Mm-hmm. So they beat the Wonder Killer this time by he gives them a super difficult geometry puzzle. And they're like, yeah, we're going to solve it together. And he's like, what? You could never solve it. No one could ever solve this. And they say, we've, we've solved it. It's unsolvable. And he's like, what? You figured it out? No. And he kills himself. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's great. <laughs> You're super fucking smart. We promise. <laughs> uh... God, okay. 
And then cut to dun dun dun. The secretary lady is watching that scene unfold on a projector. She's she's spying on Nehru's dream battle. She can see him. She's in on it or something. Can I have a guess? Yeah. Does this never come up again? No. It comes up one more time. Oh, okay. Oh, that's a shame. You're, you're gonna love it. <laughs> so, Kotobuki apologizes to Nehru for leaving her behind and stuff. Cut back to the present where Nehru, she had been telling the other three girls about that, you know, the fact that Kotobuki wants to kill her. And they argue about it. They're like, no, you can't just fucking kill her. And Nehru's like, I think I need a killer. <laughs> and they're like, well, you should sleep on it. <laughs> <laughs> All three of them go to leave. So big meeting, dun dun. We see the secretary lady and she's on a big screen talking to the mannequin men. And she says, Nehru is getting closer to the truth behind the temptation of death. Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> God damn it. I forgot I, I, I transcribed this because it makes no sense. Okay. Nehru is getting closer to the truth behind the temptation of death. Kotobuki did give her a hint. Innocent sorrow. You managed to deflect her with an excuse, though. Girl suicides. If we told them the real reason, none of them would fight. Yeah, not if they knew the root cause of the two of us. You think so? So, so how do you like all that? Uh, <laughs> now you understand everything. Uh, well, am I meant to understand everything at this point? Because we like, <sighs> there's a little more to this, right? Like, th we, we're going to find out more about their deal next ep is my understanding. The ep after next ep. We're not covering it this time because that, it needs its own ep. Oh, okay, sure, sure, sure. Yeah. But like the innocent sorrow thing, I'm like, how is that a hint to the origin of this technology? What the fuck are you that, talking about? That shit, about? I have no idea what the fuck they're talking about. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but anyways, you see that Momoe and Rika are spying on them. They're actually seeing this conversation. So they're like, I, they wouldn't fight if they knew our origin. And one of them says, I think they would fight because they understand girl sorrow. And Momo and Rika are like, oh, the, the secretary knows them. Oh, so back with, I actually ran back to Nehru because she's like, I have a feeling that Nehru is just going to kill her without us. And I need to be there for her. And so she tells Nehru a very important story about a time her and her dead friends, the main girl's dead friends. We're doing, it's a thing that's like a self-made Ouija board in Japan where you have a coin and you write down all the characters and it, I forget what you call it. It's like miss something. Right. Okay. But it's, it's very similar to a Ouija board conceptually. And they were doing it at school. And the question was, Koito asked, does my crush like me back? And it moved to yes. And I isn't sure if she or Kotobuki moved it. And she's like, that's fantasy. That's the fantasy of not knowing. And they're like, yes, that is fantasy. And they both push the button to kill the friend together. But <sighs> So now Kotobuki's dead and it's beautiful. Okay. And then, and then it cuts well, to hey, Nehru. Hang on, no, 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 <laughs> hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. Do you have any explanation for what the connection between those two things is? Like, that is fantasy. Yes, I agree we should kill this person. I think the idea is that because they push the button together, you don't know whether it was Nehru that killed her or I, theoretically. And so you can fantasize about it not being you who killed her. So I no longer has an issue with the girl dying. She is more concerned with giving Nehru an excuse for it not being her. Yeah, I guess. <laughs> I... I'm just telling you what happened. I, I mean... I... <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I don't, know, I don't know what to make of any of that. <laughs> and then Nehru looks like she's moving out. She like packs a briefcase and takes Adam the rat with her. But we don't find out like she's just still in the rest of the episodes like normal. And it's like, did she leave? Did she move? Where, where would she have moved to? I don't understand. Yeah. Do we know she moved? Do we see her somewhere else? I... <sighs> No, but then it's like, what was the point of that scene? Why did she pack up and where did she take the rat? And what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, it's time for episode 10. It's time for trans stuff. Yeah. Yeah. I sort of feel like I should have watched this one. <laughs> <laughs> maybe. Yeah. But maybe not. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Momoe, we see Momoe all dressed up for a date. Oh my gosh. And and she's going on a date with a guy and it's really cute. But oh, she wakes up. It was just a dream. Cry, cry, cry. Okay. 
Okay. She goes over to her closet and she looks and there's like a bunch of boy clothes. And then over in the corner is one single set of girl clothes. And she's like, I'm going to do it. I'm going to wear the girl clothes. Again, I can see how you would think this is a trans thing. Yeah. You see. Yeah. Rika and I are grilling the mannequins about why how they're involved with that uh, company and stuff. And, and Japan Platy, that's the name of the company. <laughs> and, and then Nehru is just like, oh yeah, they're the founders of the company. And she shows them a, a picture of them. Not as mannequins, I assume. Yeah, back when they were a human. Is there an explanation for why they look like mannequins? In their big backstory episode, at one point they're just suddenly mannequins. Okay. Oh, but here they say they abandoned their bodies and are just brains now. Right. Okay. And so obviously, if, if you're just a brain, what you want to be is in a mannequin with a weird triangle mouth. <laughs> I and Rika are, are very distracted because Nehru changed her hairstyle and that's much more important. Okay. What did she change it to? It's just like down a little more and a little more girly, you know? Okay, sure. So, you know, they've discovered that these mannequins are the head of this company and then that they know many things that are going on. But then Momo texts them about how she's busy with a date. And they're like, oh, with a girl, right? Ha ha ha. And then Momo says, no, with a boy. And they start typing at her really fast. And it's, it would be cute in another context. And they're like, what? You're on a date with a boy? Blah, 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 yeah, blah. it'd be cute in another context where there wasn't a much more important thing happening over there that you're now ignoring. Yeah, because then they run off. And the mannequins are like, didn't they have questions for us? And they're like, I guess girl talk comes first. Oh, God. Fuck off. And they never come back to that conversation. Oh, fuck <laughs> off. And it makes you realize that this entire show, these guys are willing to tell them fucking everything about their big plan and stuff as soon as they ask. It's just that none of the girls ask a single question about what's <laughs> happening. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's an interesting writing trick, isn't it? Like, <laughs> what if we, <laughs> what if we just have our characters never ask any questions, <laughs> or even stick around for the answers? They're just so distracted by girl talk. Yeah. Oh Jesus! So bad, especially to to have that big dramatic, you know, them spying on on that meeting, and it's like, oh, done, 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 oh. and then the girls don't give a fuck. They have to go and talk about girl shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Jesus. So all this is much more important than all that. So they meet up with Momoe, who's dressed all femme, and they ask her about how, how her date went. And she's like, where'd you even meet this boy? Because she goes to an all-girls school. That's when they establish that fact. Right. And he ran into her at a subway station because he follows her Insta, where she has like a bunch of Instagram followers. And the big twist is that he thought that she was a boy and he's gay and she just can't fucking catch a break with these gays. They keep hounding her. <sighs> okay. So, she, so is, she, is she like posting selfies on Instagram and shit? This is the thing, right? So she has this complex about not being femme enough, but she has an Instagram where she posts a bunch of pictures of her where I guess she never establishes whether she's a girl or a boy. And, and it's very popular. And, it's, and just posting pictures in general. Can I just can I just say that it's not an uncommon thing for trans people to not really be comfortable with photos and selfies until after they've transitioned. That would be an unusual thing for a trans person to do, I, I think. If you were just trying to code Momoe as trans without explicitly stating it, which one I don't think this show would fucking do, there's a lot of really mixed messaging there. Because, yeah, it's like she... She could pass as a girl, but she chooses to dress as a boy and be confused for a boy and and share a lot of pictures of her where she's all in all boy chic. And it's very strange. Yeah. The thing that gets to me as well is, is, is just the way she, that she's depicted in the show. She's not particularly androgynous. Like, she just looks like a girl to me. Yeah, if she drew if she grew her hair out, you know, there would be no like she would just look like any of the other fucking generic anime girls. Yeah. She just has a generic anime girl face. Yeah, and like there are lots of girls with short hair. <laughs> like that's just a thing. Like I yeah, it's like obviously when she dresses all femme for this episode, there's nothing like, whoa, what a weird imagery this is because she looks so masculine. No, she's just a fucking anime girl. Yeah, I think this is... She's just tall. This is part of the thing for me is that like all these things that you, you point to and saying, well, look, this looks like transcoding. Okay, yeah, I can see how you would read it that way, but it also works perfectly well under the biphonin thing. Yeah. Like that she's the girl who 
is concerned that she isn't femme enough. And there are a lot, of, and the thing is that there's a bunch of other things that only work under the biphonin thing and don't work as a trans girl. Yeah. Occam's razor. Yeah, it just yeah, it just feels like an Occam's razor situation where it's like there's one of these things that is far more likely than the other. Even if some of the things do read that way, there's there's other things that don't on one, on one column and and the, and the other column it all works. Like the other column it all just makes sense. <sighs> anyway. Yeah. So you know she's devastated because she met up with a guy who thought she was a boy, but he thought she was a boy because she has a really popular Instagram where she dresses and presents as a boy. But she's really devastated that they, he thought it's so it's, it's stupid. Uh, yeah, it's, it's look, look, it's, it's stupid. But I could see how the, if this is the complex you're going for, obviously her emotions around all of this stuff are complicated. Blah 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 blah. Yeah, but it's but it's also just dumb. I mean, also just the idea of her having a popular Instagram account is like this. Just feels like the kids are on TikTok. You know what I mean? Like it's sort of <laughs> it just feels like the sort of thing an out of touch dude chucks in your show. I don't know. Oh, yeah, because you know something uh, that didn't come up in Rika's episode? The whole being an idol thing. Yeah. That was important for the other episode, but for the sake of her weird, depressing life with her snack bar mom, it's it, it's just, it doesn't matter. Being an idol is just kind of a thing she also had going on on the side. Yeah, yeah. Like, if one of the char- if one of these characters was going to have a popular Instagram account and was an influencer and shit. Yeah, that should have been Rika's yeah, thing. Yeah, no. Oh, whatever. Stupid. But anyway, it's time for a flashback. A good, good Sasaki said, say flashback. Okay. This is when you find out that Sasaki wants to quit his job so that he can be a full-time artist. Oh, I guess this wasn't a flashback, actually. Or, you know, it was only a flashback in the context of this episode, but it's happening in modern times. Because mm. he invites I to a solo exhibition. It's very important. And he says, you have to come see the painting in the back eye. It's very important for you to come see it alone. <laughs> God. I want you to come into this room with me by yourself. Uh, yeah, everything about this situation would get you fucking fired for the record. <laughs> <laughs> like there is very strict rules against this kind of shit. Yeah. So yeah, like getting your students' contact information or trying to meet up with them outside of school stuff is just like that's absolutely no, no. not allowed. You'd be fired. Absolutely not. Yeah. Like cuz this is the episode we find out that he's not a creep, right? Yeah. Or well, it's still kind of ambiguous at the end of this. Okay. I was going to say cuz like if they if they're playing the creep up until this moment, like right into the end, we don't know. <laughs> it's kind of that's kind of amazing. No, yeah, yeah, it's it's so fucked. It's really just, the show's just fucking with you. Mm. It's just having a little good time fucking with you. Yeah, yeah. Moe's crying in her bed and being comforted by her gator pet friends. And she's like, I just wish I could experience love. Oh, wait, I just realized I have this picture of her bra that I can show you. Oh, okay. Do you see how I think it's kind of weird? <laughs> well, I mean, I gotta be honest, I'm not that familiar with bras. Oh, I guess that's true. But yeah, that that section, I've never seen that before. The, the flesh-colored cloth across the... Uh... Across the center line there. See, that's also the thing. It's kind of, it's not a super blatant pink. It it's looks, it's very peachy pink to the point where you're like, yeah, in this shot, you don't really notice it. I wouldn't look at this and go, oh, it's trans colors. Yes. That's the wrong blue. The pink is not really a particularly pink. And the white is only like the barest highlight. Like that's not, that doesn't read, that doesn't read trans flag to me. Because the other thing about trans colors is they need to read like the flag. Whenever you see them used that way, it's generally used as like, you know, the pink, blue, white, blue pink that is the order isn't it (laughs) or either way but yeah like that's not that doesn't read as a trans bra to me yeah and again like you see this in in another episode and so when she showed it in that latter episode i was just like oh it's that weird ass broad again with the weird thing in the middle and why does it look like that Mm. but and so other people were like oh it's revealing her trans flag colors for the first time and i'm like "Mm -hmm." but i saw it earlier and it's it does look a little more pink in this episode but still it's i don't think it was supposed to be a dramatic reveal of trans color bra no like that you look at like nora nora's redesign in season seven of ruby (laughs) that's way more like looks like it's trying to do the trans flag thing. It turned out it wasn't, but... Or that other person's jacket in this episode who we're about to meet. Yeah, yeah. that, 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 doesn't, that doesn't read as a trans flag to me. Hell yeah. <laughs> See, this is why I'm, I'm glad that you're here in trans and, and you can agree with me. I'm not, I'm not the spokesperson for all trans people. I don't want to say that. I don't know the fuck. I'm I'm very newly trans. I don't know what the fuck I'm doing. <laughs> no, you can sense trans flag. It's it's a it's a special. It's a level one skill that you. Can- <laughs> it's a cantrip. <laughs> flag legitness. Uh. But anyways, so here's Kaoru. So Kaoru enters and because Momo is in her dream battle zone mm-hmm. and her gators uh, helping fight, and Kaoru says Boku. Uh, 
Kurito Karu, and Momo is like Boku, because you know that's kind of like a boyish pronoun. Sure. And he's like, yeah, it just suits me better. And Momoe says, oh, it's fine. You look plenty feminine. Because Momoe assumes that this is a girl who has the same weird ass complex that she has. Right. Okay. Because, yeah, otherwise, otherwise shit thing to say. <laughs> yeah. Momoe is doing that, you know, like, Ugh, I guess you can just, I don't know, assume I'm a boy or whatever. It's not worth it. But Kaoru's like, Momo. Hmm? Momoe? Momoko? Momo Elko. And, and Momo's like, ah, Momo, eh? So the, he can tell she's a girl. Mm. And he's like, tall, cool beauties like you are totally my type. And, and Momo is like, oh, I get it. You like me even though I'm a girl. Because <laughs> she's just so sick of these fucking games. <laughs> and he says, no, the, I'm a boy, actually. So this is our trans boy. This is Kaoru. Right, okay. And it's interesting because I don't know if this is what a trans person would always say in Japanese, but he says, kokoro wa danchi, which is like, in my heart, I'm a boy. Mm. I mentioned this before, and I, I wonder if the like language around being trans is slightly different, at least like for now in Japanese discourse. Mm. Like, I don't know if in Japanese it's not as weird to be like, I was a boy, but now I'm a girl in, this, in the way that like, you know, the bride was a boy is called that. Yeah, like the, the, that's definitely like a, a potential cultural difference in the way that it's, it's discussed. And and either way, the way that this trans boy is handled is awful and, and miserable, but that is one little thing where I'm like, I, I do wonder if there's like that that bit of language difference and yeah. I would love to hear like an actual an actual native level Japanese speaker, not someone who watches the anime, tell me what it's like. <laughs> <laughs> this does also make me think of that throwaway line in um, Odd Taxi where there's that Guys on the internet talking about what was the line again? Something about how what Western? Yeah, yeah, they were talking about things that tend to trend on Japanese social media, and one was Western takes on gender in Japan. And I was like, I want to if I can hear more about yeah, that. Yeah, what, what, what are you talking about? What are you talking about? Come on, tell us about that. <laughs> yeah, 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 tell me more. What is it you find interesting about the way we talk about gender over there? Because uh, that's yeah, yeah. They could just be talking about like androgyny and like high fashion in Japan. Like that's that's a thing that people I do see discussed here sometimes. Yeah. But I don't know. No, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. I want to know what I want to know what that line was about. <laughs> <laughs> Super curious. <I'm> curious. <laughs> and obviously, you know, like all these like the language and everything evolves so fast around these issues that it's just like oh, it would be really interesting to know what the like parallel track is in Japanese for how these things are discussed. Yeah. I mean, that's that, that's it's a thing you lose sight of even here how fast language changes and general underst- and like the, how the general understanding forces language changes too. Trans stuff being like openly discussed in the West, like over the last ten years, things have changed so fucking much, so rapidly. Like, oh yeah, it's pretty amazing. Yeah, it is. Yeah. It is. Anyway, so obviously there's like there'd be a big sort of seismic shift happening in Japan too. But obviously, as not as non-natives of Japan, it's very hard for us to figure out what the fuck's going on. <laughs> yeah. So there's some aspects of the way, the way Kaoru is framed and stuff that it's hard for me to say like how ignorant they are. The the writers, not 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 Japan in general. <laughs> I assume you mean. Yeah, 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 yeah. Sorry, yeah. The, the the writer man. So it's worth noting that you know this is a trans boy, but he's in this system that only allows girls. Yeah. So that's this is you know I'm I'm putting my arms up. <laughs> yeah. That on that aspect, it's like hard to judge the other stuff that happens it's like oh no no, that, no that's bad <laughs> like that's just, yeah that's just a bad yeah, thing it's like i could i could conceive of like a cultural place where maybe even like someone who's like i think that i identify as a boy but for now i still in a way see myself even as a girl even though i'm a trans boy like i i, I can't speak to all that no. but everything that's going to happen to kaoru is also fucking horrible yeah yeah it's, it's, also, it's also just generally disrespectful and used for edge in the way everything else is in the show so let's 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 get, should we should we get into it? <laughs> no, you have to wait for your shit cake. <laughs> Yay! Can't wait for my shit cake. Kaoru's design, of course. I mean, it's the same like generic anime girl face that all the characters in this shit has. He does that thing where he's like has long hair, but has kind of like hidden it under a baseball cap, and has like a long skirt. And just like in in general, I was like, I, I wish you, you didn't like. It, it feels like they're trying to push the, you know, like this is someone with feminine features, but they think they're a boy, yeah. kind of thing. And it's, I, I wish they didn't. Yeah. But he has a trans colored jacket, which is what everybody got. Really, the, they forgave everything that happened this episode because God, there's that trans colored jacket. Yeah, that's, that sucks. I hate that. I hate that. I mean, it is a good it. jacket, and and they should sell it. <laughs> oh, look, yeah, I'm not just I'm not disputing the quality of the jacket, but like, 
Oh, God, it's frustrating the way people get excited sometimes for the barest fucking crumb, especially when that crumb is in the middle of a big pile of doo-doo. Yeah, it's just like, oh, I'm just focusing on that jacket. I've got tunnel vision on that fucking jacket. Yeah. <laughs> and anyways, poof, smoke bomb. It's the monster guy, and, and he comes and captures Kaoru. And so the monster guy this episode is he's got like a long Tengu nose with an eye on the end of it. And he has like a lot of stuff that's like very gross male imagery. And he has a giant heart like where his brain would be that Kaoru is like trapped in like a, a glass cage almost. Okay. And he has a giant sword that's a Y chromosome. Hmm. <laughs> okay. And I don't... <laughs> Just just lots of ideas, <laughs> lots of thoughts. And he's like, oh, I see another man. You're trying to steal Kaoru from me. And so the, this is when we learn Kaoru's bad backstory, which is that Kaoru confessed to her teacher man that he identifies as a boy and the teacher man correctively raped him and got him pregnant. Mm. And you see they show a flashback of him being pinned down by the teacher and kicking until he like finally gives up as the teacher's on top of him holding him down cool. and it's much more gratuitous than all these other many uh sexual assault victims that we've met and that's the thing the other ones were already gratuitous they were already really over the top and pointless in their descriptions of what happened but to actually see it and spend time on it and also like on a topic like this Fuck this show. Yeah, it feels like it's definitely reveling in it. And just to, to like throw in, also, I got pregnant. Yeah. It's like, Fuck this. fucking A. Yeah. It's like literally the worst horrible nightmare thing that could happen to a young trans man, right? Yeah, it's, well, yeah, it's it's definitely like up there. <laughs> Jesus <sighs> Christ. Just, what a fuck. The jacket. Ah, oh, it's a cool jacket. It's so good. It's so empowering. It's just, yeah. This sucks. This sucks so much. This is just such a stupid, revolting, pointless thing to do. Yeah, because the thing is, like, even if you were trying to excuse, hey, this is a real thing that happens to young trans people, right? The show's trying to deal with the issues. This is going to become about Momoe and her cis feelings. And yeah. that's unacceptable. Yeah, yeah. It's like a, It's like a form of fridging, except the character can still walk around and talk. That's all this is. Well, they've all been pre-fridged. All these dead kids have been pre-fridged. Yeah, pre-fridged and then re- they, they, they take them out of the fridge for a bit and then put them back because they don't stick around or anything. Yeah. No, it's, it's yeah, there's, there's, no, there's no excuse for this. There's no excuse for putting this in the story. It's utterly pointless. And like you say, this ends up just being, like, like in the last episode with Mama A and, you know, a horrible thing happening to someone else, it just ends up being about Mama A and her feelings. Yeah. Uh, and just, no, that sucks. That's just a shitty thing to depict and put in your show for, for kicks, because that's all it's for. So what happens next is, so Momoe is fighting the bad guy that has Kaoru trapped in his brain heart, and Momoe, like, cuts his nose off, um, which is, like, it's a very, like, big phallic nose with an eye on the end, and the eye will, like, drip, and it's very uncomfortable. And it's funny because, like, in the next shot, the nose is back. <laughs> right. And we didn't see it grow back. It's just, like, a continuity error. Oh no, Momoe's been hit real bad. She's on the ropes. The big monster man is choking Momoe. And he's like, no worries, Kaoru. You're a beautiful woman. You should feel good about yourself. And Kaoru is just crying on the inside of the glass cage. Like, but I'm, I'm a boy. I'm a boy. And Momoe says, it's time for the big empowering moment. She says, and I'm a girl and she throws the big bad guy off her and rips her shirt open to reveal her bra Mm. so the people who wanted to think that she's trans are like see she's revealing her trans colors but as someone who knows that she's just this shitty cis idea of a girl it's she's just opening to reveal that she's wearing a bra because she's a cis girl because she has boobs yeah like again it's that thing of i can it works in both columns like, it makes sense in both situations, but like we said, there are other things that don't make sense with the trans narrative. So, yeah, just because it reads as a trans thing doesn't mean that's the only way it can read. So that's kind of that. Yeah, and it's also, it's just weird to, <laughs> to rip your shirt open to prove that you're trans. I don't know. Yeah, that too. It would be a bit more strange. Like, it would be a bit more like, see, I've been on HRT for a while and I have some boobs now. 
it's that thing of like having boobs is a thing that is like validating for trans women, but it's not like that's the proof, you know? Like Yeah. <laughs> there are lots of trans women who aren't who don't do HRT. Like there's there's it's not yeah, I don't know. It's just it's a much cleaner explanation to say that she's showing her boobs because she's a sister. Yeah, girl. yeah, that's that, I think that's that's what I'm trying to get at. It's it's this it's a lot less messy like to just take it that way as opposed to it's messy if it's a trans metaphor. And also those colors aren't right anyway, so who cares? <laughs> yeah, again like the jacket that Kaoru has, I think the designer was going for it's a trans color jacket. Yeah, yeah, that one, that one, yes, yeah. Her uh, Momo's bra not not so much. So it's like this designer does know how to make something look like a trans flag if that's what they want to yeah, do. Yeah, yeah. And so she does her big final attack on the big monster man and she breaks open the head and uh, Kaoru jumps out into Momoe's arms and the monster's like, amazing, I want to teach you all over again, and then explodes and it's like fucking gross, I hate everything. That is something I was wondering about. Like, you sort of assume, well, you know that these girls have popped up in more than one dream, right? Yeah, or some of them at least. Yeah, some of them are familiar with the situation. Do they have to face the same monster each time? Mm Mm-hmm. Because they act like the monster being defeated is like a big triumphant moment. But if this is just a, an endlessly cyclical thing, what was, what's even the point of this? If parallel worlds are real, maybe this particular iteration of this person has been saved from having to go through this endless nightmare, maybe, or something. Yeah, but then it's like, how many iterations of this person killed themselves? How many of these cycles did they have to go through? Is it just that like a lot of the girls in this, cy- in this system are bad and don't kill the monster? Because like they had, they they can't just end up in the things on their own. They have to be brought out of an egg by a girl. Well, that first girl in episode one did say that you know like we just have to run. So I guess whoever took her out that point did not realize that you're supposed to figure out how to fight these monsters and do that instead. Yeah, but that's the the weird thing is that like the actors tell the like the girls we meet that no, you have to kill it. Like they tell them that pretty early on, and they do that. Like they don't. Apart from I, who was just like that was the very first time she'd done this. All the other girls seem to know you're supposed to kill them. This is another one of these things where it's like, this doesn't seem like it's been very well thought out. Well, yeah. <laughs> anyway. So they're back at the train station sitting on some of those like waiting seats and Kaoru has put his jacket over Momoe. And that's when a lot of people were like, see, she's trans confirmed because she's wearing the trans jacket now. Yeah, okay. But, you know, obviously he put it over her because she has her shirt ripped open to show her bra. Mm. And... Kaori says, next time I'm reborn, I'll be the one to protect you. And Momo is like, don't get it wrong. Not all girls want to be protected. Wink. And Kaori is like, ah, I see. Blah, 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 blah. And he's like, you're a lovely girl. And she says, you're and you're a brave boy. And he's like, thank you. Do, so do you mind younger boys? And she's like, oh, I don't know. Blah, blah, blah. And then he kisses her. And and she blushes at and at panic the her crocodile who saw and she's like shh <laughs> and it is pretty cute like this scene in a in a vacuum is sweet yeah it sounds sweet in a vacuum <laughs> I mean like aside from anything else the fact that the boy is here in the system you know yeah it sucks it sucks and yeah it's like this is the only time that we have confirmed that i I, because i kept watching the episode back and trying to see if we could uh hear momo a use like any particular pronouns for him or whatnot but we don't really get a chance to there's no like time when she says kare or kanajo so it's hard to tell exactly how seriously she's taking his identity or whatnot Mm. okay is this a good time to maybe in terms of just reinforcing all the Momoi isn't trained stuff. Is this a good time to talk about the manga? (sighs) So some people told me, hey, we know that before this episode, they were like, hey, I bet that Momo is trans because this author has written about trans characters before. There's a manga that he wrote that's about a boy and his partner that's a trans girl. So I went and read the manga. I, I to be honest, I haven't read all of it because I I'd had about my fill. <laughs> <laughs> but it's about a man who had a trans friend in high school, especially, and it talks about like all these horrible things that happened to her. Of course, as a trans person, of course. And the way, just like a lot of the way that it talks about it is very one. It makes it all about this guy, the cis guy. You know, it's like, oh, it's isn't it an interesting and an inspiring thing that I knew this trans person who went through all this shit, <laughs> and and it's really inspired my art to be better. <laughs> 
Okay. And just like a lot of the stuff that they talk about is like the cis male character guy has sex with a woman and he's like telling her about his trans friend because it's just so fascinating. <laughs> and he's like, he's a boy, but he has the heart of a girl. And she's like, oh, I'm kind of like that too. I have some of the heart of a boy because I'm bi. Cool. And there's just a lot of really like goofy ass shit. Yeah, because that's, that's, that's the same. Sexuality and gender are the same. <laughs> It, it just depends on how much of that of that t- other gender you got in your heart, you know? It's a percentage. Yeah, but, but that, that's also like, just to me, all that says is like, yeah, you have to, in order to be bi, you have to be a bit the other gender because I, that you're, you're only, you can only be attracted to the other gender. Mm-hmm. <sighs> this, again, this seems like a person who just doesn't know what they're talking about. There's a big scene later where he's trying to tell the other students that they're being too mean to the trans friends, but he goes off on this whole fucking speech that involves the beheading of Japanese people in Afghanistan. <laughs> and it's like so fucking wild. And it's like, so what if my friend wants to cut their dick off? <laughs> blah, 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 beheading of people in Afghanistan. Blah, 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 blah. So you're all bigots. <laughs> Thanks, bud. Thanks, man. You really, you really, you good friend. <laughs> what the fuck is it? Oh, God. So that's how woke this, right? Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah. This really happened a lot where people were pointing out, well, he had one show with lesbians and he did a comic with trans people in it. Must be woke. And they didn't go and actually go, like, just look at what was in those goddamn shows because it wasn't good. Yeah. Uh, it really is like if someone told you, like, oh, the author of Sight did a thing with a trans person in it, so he's woke. Well, for the more relevant example, you know, uh, The Silent Voice really talks about bullying and suicide. It's really, you know, so it's really deep and important. And it's like, then you go watch it. Sure does talk about this. Yeah, and then you go and watch it and go, ooh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but we're not done yet, God damn it! There's so much to enjoy this episode still. Oh, God. Okay. So so after this very uh, touching moment where she gets a kiss from Kaoru and he poofs, she goes back to her statue friends, the pre-buried gay girl, and there's a shower curtain around her in a circle. And on the PA, she hears five, four, three, two, one. And the sh- curtain drops and the statue's gone. And the friend is kneeling there. She's back alive. Her name's Haruka, by the way. She was a person, <laughs> but not really. <laughs> not for the show. So she gets up and she reaches out to Momoe and she's like, Momoe! But then she passes through Momoe like a ghost. And Momoe's like, the statue's gone. It's gone. It's over. It's really over. Except for possibly in the new super real finale, we don't end up finding out if the statue girls come back to life or not. Yeah, like what's the symbolism of her passing through her like a ghost? I don't know, because apparently we are not supposed to care about if the statue girls come back to life anymore. That's not important. (laughs) And Momoe doesn't care. She's just like, yes, I don't have to fight anymore. Thank God. It's like, geez, I'm so glad that this is all about you, Momoe. No matter what happens to your fucking all these annoying LGBT people, (laughs) it's all about you. (laughs) I'm just like you would think the inclusion of a bit where you see what happens to a statue when you've done enough would mean that we are supposed to care about the statues. But clearly they haven't made it very clear what the fuck had just happened. So what are we supposed to take away? That's because that's not what's important because what's really important is what happens next. So suddenly there's some water dripping from the ceiling. I still don't know why that happens. And it cuts to the Akas telling the other girls that Momoe will no longer be coming because she graduated. And the girls are like, oh, good for her. And they make no attempt to contact her or ask her about what happened or whatnot. (laughs) Of course not. Because they never ask questions. (laughs) And I suddenly remember something she has to do while she's talking with Nehru and Rika. Oh, that's right, because we have to resolve all her stuff with her teacher before we do the other very dramatic thing. Okay. So I takes a shower and makes herself up all fancy and to look kind of like her mom. Uh... Like in an attempt to look mature and beautiful. And she goes to the art exhibition. Uh, and goes to the back of, of the to see the painting that her teacher really wanted her to see. And she's like, it's a painting of me, but different. And Sasaki Sensei shows up and he says, yes, it's you, but grown up. Don't you think it looks like someone? And she says, yeah, my mom. And he says, yes, someday you'll be a wonderful adult woman like your mother. 
kind, strong, and beautiful. And she says, you love my mom, don't you? Yes, with all my heart. You're her daughter, so you should have faith in yourself. And she says, Sensei, oh, I forgot she says this. She says, there's something I want to ask you. Why did Koito die? That won't come back around in the episodes that have been released. We don't find out why Koito died and we don't see the rest of that conversation. (laughs) So he likes her mom and not her. He doesn't like her because she's too young for him. He likes her mom, who he thinks she will look exactly like in a few years and have all the same qualities. So it's fine. He doesn't want to fuck her, Phoenix. It's fine. I just, I I, I don't know what I'm supposed to say. It's fine, (laughs) but it's sad because she likes him, Phoenix. But it's really sad because he doesn't like her. He likes her mom, who's her, but a bit older. So he'll never date I. It's just... What a tragedy. There's just so much going on here. Aren't you sad for I? (laughs) Like... Do you think the writer thought that this was a beautiful thing for the teacher to do, to explain his feelings for I's mother? I'm leaning into my conspiracy theory that the rest of the people working on the show thought he was supposed to be creepy and the writer didn't. Yeah. (laughs) Because this feels to me like this was the writer going, ah, see... He broke it to her gently and, and in a beautiful way. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's his idea. When it's actually like intensely fucking creepy and groomy to like, <laughs> hey, I, I spent a bunch of time imagining you as an older person and I painted it. And it's like, and, and one day you'll be of age. That's cool. And I just want you to come alone to the back of this art exhibition and look at it with me where I can tell you about how I love your mom, who's just like you, but just a bit older. And someday you'll be just like your mom. The only thing that makes me wary of saying I definitely believe that this is what the author is thinking is that, like, on the one hand, this author loves talking about sexual assault. Like, just fucking loves it. It's his favorite thing. He does it almost every episode. So he obviously thinks about it a bit, like he at least knows a little bit about it. But on the other hand, he's managed to make this character who is so intensely fucking, like a fucking groomer, like an awful fucking weird creepy pedophile dude. But he maybe doesn't think that's creepy? How can both of these things be happening at the same time? This intense focus on sexual assault, but completely missing the way this dude looks from the way he behaves. And again, like... Rika, even though like saying those things makes her a huge bitch, she says all the things that you worry are true about him from the framing. She brings up how it looks. Yeah. Is it meant to be one of those things where it's like, the things that she's bringing up, oh, that's ridiculous. That's such a ridiculous read on the situation. Like, uh, you really have to squint to be able to see that, as opposed to, no, that's just what we think. (laughs) Yeah, I guess it's supposed to be like, oh, Rika, you shouldn't assume those things. You only assume those things because you grew up with a horrible loose Yeah, yeah. It's like- Bring it back to Ruby. It's like Ren's criticisms of the team in in that episode in season eight. <laughs> that like I we I don't think we were supposed to think that those were accurate, but it turns out they were incredibly accurate. Is this the same situation? <laughs> I guess it's so fucked. It's so fucked. I mean, on the one hand, it's just all the painting him as a creep thing is fucked, but also just this act that he does, painting this painting of her and talking about how she'll be older one day. It's like, how do you not see this? This, this is straight up grooming. Like, that's what this is. Yeah, it's like, if they admitted it was grooming, you'd almost be like, this is a kind of, like, over-the-top cartoony depiction of grooming, almost. <laughs> yeah. But they don't think it's I don't grooming. think they think it's grooming. Yeah, I think they think this is beautiful. <sighs> Holy shit. Going into a back room alone but Yeah, what, what we need to take away from this is that he likes her mother and not her, and, and that, that makes her sad. <laughs> so she did have a crush on him. Yes. Because cool. that's why she, like, dressed up as her mom to go see him, because she wanted to be sexy. <sighs> The worst thing is that there's like there's a version of that story that's tellable about the school student who has a crush on a teacher or whatever. Like that's a thing yeah. you can play with, just not in this show with all the sexual assault and he's creep and stuff. Yeah, and from a person who doesn't understand anything. Like you remember the way they handled Dipper's crush on Wendy in in Gravity Falls, where like for a while they were playing it off as this completely one sided thing where she wasn't really aware, and and there was always a sense like obviously it's not going to happen. He's like. What was he, like 12 and she's like 16 or so? I, I, yeah, I don't remember, but yeah. But then eventually, like, they, they talk about it. Like, they actually do get into it, like, which was kind of nice. It was, it was handled in a very gentle way where, like, she says, look, yeah, I was aware, but 
come on, man. <laughs> like, <laughs> this is not going to happen. Yeah, this, this isn't a thing. Like, yeah. Yeah, and then they're just cool friends. Yeah, and then they're being friends and they exchange the hats at the end of the show and it was nice and stuff. And, yeah. And she didn't paint a fucking picture. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Here's you as a man. For this is you, but older, and this is Grunkle Stan. <laughs> <laughs> Beautiful and strong. <laughs> and kind. <laughs> Uh. So, how dare you distract me because I have to tell you about the rest of this fucking bullshit. Because after she asks the teacher, you know, why did Koito die again? But sure would love to know that. Doesn't matter. Mm. You cut to the Akas, and one of the Akas is saying, our plans may end up going off course. To confront Thanatos, we need warriors of Eros, his polar opposite. <laughs> what? <laughs> They're gonna Thanatos? They have to confront Thanatos. They need warriors of Eros. Okay. We're going to find out what that's about. Oh, uh, guys. <laughs> <laughs> so they're like, will Momoe still go back there for us? Who knows? She knows it now. The overwhelming fear of death. So cut back to, to the subway statue zone where Momoe saw that dripping water. And here comes a girl who, so it's a regular generic schoolgirl uniform body. And then the head is a big dark cocoon. And she has a scythe. Okay. And she says, congratulations, you graduated. That girl's come back to life. I'd want to let you live, but Frill would be mad. Do you want to die here? And Mo is like, what? What? <laughs> and then... I, I do think this looks kind of cool. The cocoon face opens, and so her, like, head turns into a butterfly, but, like, the butterfly body is her head, and it has a little mouth, like, da ba 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 Okay. And I don't know, it's kind of cool. Okay. And so she's like, do you want to die? And then Panic, the crocodile pet, attacks this evil girl, and she kills him real quick with her scythe. And it's that kind of, like, all the lines during this are drawn with, like, super a ton of lines, and it's very horror. Oh, no. Right. And Momo is so freaking out, and the girl comes over, and she starts eating. She takes, like, random chunks of meat out of the crocodile and is eating it. And she's like, they say crocodile chase like chicken. You have some too and she force feeds crying momo some of her beloved pets so if you were wondering why did they introduce the pets this is why yeah it's so that they can die and the girls can super freak the fuck out and also be force fed pet so is and is, is momo gonna die now or well we cut to momo later at dinner and they're having fried chicken <laughs> And she's and she runs to the sink and throws up, and her mom's like, "What's wrong, Mome?" And then it cuts to her in bed with her cover over her, but she's just saying, "I can't sleep. I can't sleep. I can't sleep. I can't sleep. I can't sleep." End of episode. Cool, cool, cool. Okay. So this was the episode where I was just like, "Fucking awesome!" You have all this horrible transphobic shit, and then all this shit happens right at the end as a treat. Yeah. Um. So. <sighs> The Butterfly Scythe Guild did say that the her friend is alive. Yes, she said your friend came back. Right. So I guess maybe theoretically that's true. But like we never get confirmation that she's like around in this world or anything. Right. Right. So who cares? Yeah. Do you think that the fucking girls who killed themselves are relevant to the story, Phoenix? <laughs> Fool. But 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 also there's something about it. Like, when you graduate, this thing tries to kill you or is going to force feed you a pet for some reason? Yeah, yeah, because she's like, I don't want to kill you, but then Frill would be mad. And then she just force feeds her her pet and Momoe wakes up. And it's like, what well, I thought you said that you had to kill her. Yeah, yeah. So you got Frill, you got a weird cocoon face person who works for Frill, and also there's Thanatos and you need the warriors of Eros to fight Thanatos. And... And isn't isn't that interesting and cool, Phoenix? Aren't you so high? <laughs> I mean, like it's one of those things where in a show that was better, you'd be up for new information late in the game. But in a show that's been throwing things at you and then just taking them away and not following up on stuff, I'm less interested in new shit. You know what I mean? And it's just so fucking edgy. Yeah, Especially yeah, that too. like I just mean, this this weird Pokemon crocodile that, you know, like I spent this whole time being like, why did these things suddenly get introduced? And then it's like, oh God, it's killed. Oh God, she's traumatized. Oh God, she's being forced to eat it. Yeah, that, like that's <laughs> why it's here. Shut up. Yeah. <sighs> so 
that's episodes five through 10 of, of Wonder Egg Priority. Wow. Oh, also some people n- number them differently because they don't want to count the recap episode, but I think that gets really confusing. So I'm, I'm including the recap episode whenever I talk about the episode numbers. I mean, yeah, look, like it exists and there's other episodes coming. So don't make it confusing. <laughs> don't overthink it. Yeah. The following episode is going to be just a big old backstory dump. That's a bunch of stuff that has nothing to do with anything we've seen and will explain who Frill and stuff is. And it's all horrible and fucked in in both intended and unintended ways. <laughs> but it really is its own thing. And so this is these are the last of all the episodes where it's just like, you know, the girls meet weird suicide girls and do their own shit and, and you learn about them, but not really. And it's weird. <laughs> so how do you enjoy that beautiful? Do you feel empowered? Oh, so empowered. Yeah, no, I, I feel I feel great. I was already having a good day, and uh, oh, it's gotten better. Wonder Egg Priority is reimagining girl empowerment for magical girl anime. I can't get over how that stupid joystick article, or Kotaku, whoever read that article, it was written by a fucking dude. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Guys, I know that there's little just like clickbait articles, but you can't write that and title it that, and it's it's an attack. It's a yeah. psychological attack, and I I need to find that person and ask them if they watch the rest of the show. <laughs> and like there are there are women and trans women who have been big backers of the show. It's not to say that, you know that, that they aren't out there, but. I don't know, they're wrong. <laughs> yeah, but especially to be told, like, this is reimagining girl empowerment by a boy. That's, yeah, you idiot. Like, I think any review that, unless you're talking about, like, a minority group that you're a part of, any review that's like, this property is empowering, I'm like, shut up. <laughs> yeah, no, idiot. Idiot nonsense. I mean, again, like you said, it's just, it's just clickbait nonsense, but still. Shut up. <laughs> yeah, but still, it's illegal and something needs to be done. <laughs> you need to, this person needs to be arrested. It's not crimes. <laughs> So there's still two more episodes that were already released and there's a third episode coming, but I think it'll make sense to talk about them all together because most of everything happening over there has nothing to do with what's happening over here. Mm. <laughs> and we'll have to wait for every all the rest of that. But it's beautiful anime of the year. Yeah. That is- Get your eggs here. I worry that we're spending too much of our time arguing against these people who said it was good. But you don't understand. We were watching the show. Well, Cube was it eventually. It wasn't me eventually. But we would. We were, this show was happening, and up until like this point, all these there were these people who were still insisting that it was good, and it's just like, ah. <laughs> I don't feel this way about other bad shows. Like I'm with Ruby. I'm never like, or really, am I like frustrated by people saying it's good? Because I'm just like, well, obviously it's not. <laughs> but, I mean, we get a little frustrated by people saying different things are like woke in it or what. Oh, oh yeah, sure. Yeah, I, there's that. But like, I don't, I, it's much more frustrating when it comes to Wonder Egg. I, I think partially because Wonder Egg is doing, it to, in some ways is doing its best to fool you into thinking that it is that is this. And it's not. Like, it's very much not. Yeah. yeah. Anyway. I think around episode four, I started comparing it to Persona in that Atlas games, you know, they like to touch on these LGBT things and like women being, you know, misogyny and stuff, but mm. they don't tend to end up actually saying anything useful about it. They're just like, isn't that cool? Mm. Isn't isn't it cool to think about, whoa, and it's that same feeling. It's just, it's just, woo, it's cool. Yeah, and in the meantime, you're doing these pretty exploitative kind of scenes and stuff with the characters and the things. So, yeah, which I think is something that also happens in the persona games, right? Yeah. It's like, Oh, she doesn't just want to be a sex object here. Here she is in her sexy cat suit. Yeah. Sex, sexy, sex, sex. Yeah. Sexy, sexy, sex. Yeah. But it's okay because it's empowering. <sighs> it's, it's reimagining empowering for sex object women. Yeah. I mean, that's that other thing of just like, yeah, this fictional girl character is in charge of her sexuality. It's like, no, she's a fictional character. She's not real. <laughs> Oh, that's right. I need to fucking play near replicant now that it's out. You reminded me. <laughs> uh, that that fucking little illustration of the fucking emotions are prohibited. <laughs> while, 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 while she's riding the other boy around like a bike. <laughs> yeah, with her butt on his face. That, that's definitely near Automata. <laughs> Perfectly summed up in one silly sketch. Uh, right. it's anime it's amazing stuff yeah. but yeah I hope you're all very empowered <laughs> and <laughs> it'll be hard it'll be hard to wait this so long to tell you about 
Brill and everything, but it, it's important and we will get to it. It will happen. Yeah, but we got to wait for that last episode to come. Yeah, we got to wait for the last episode to prove me wrong about all my critiques in these episodes when it when it brings everything around and makes everything relevant and empowering. And then I'll be like, damn, you sunk my battleship. <laughs> all right. See you guys. All right. Have a nice anime, everybody. Bye. <laughs>